Hi everybody. This is going to be part one of building a C Sharp and ML.NET stock predictor. But what we're going to be doing in this video is a demo for DataTier.NET, which is an entity framework alternative that uses all stored procedures. And also it's going to be a demo for Blazor Accelerate, which is built using DataJuggler.Accelerate NuGet package. And this will change how you work with C Sharp and Excel. What we're going to be doing is downloading data from this site called endofdaydata.com. They give you about the last month or so of stock prices. And we're going to be uh, using NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange is all we're going to focus on. And I already have a month plus a couple of days downloaded, so it'll save you watching me download about 40-something files. And we're also going to be using NASDAQ.com gives us a comma delimited list of all these stock prices. So we're going to get the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. It gives us the stock name, the industry and sector, and a few other attributes we'll need. And hence, it's a comma delimited list, and that can be opened in Excel. So you get to, we're going to generate a couple of C Sharp classes, and I'll show you how to load an entire worksheet, and you never have to refer to a cell again. So if you want to stick around, you're going to need Visual Studio 2022 and SQL Server or SQL Server Express is what I'm using because it's free. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to do all this in one hour, but before I start the timer, I'm going to show you how to install datatier.net and the datatier.net database on your machine. So let's go ahead and do that now. If you want to clone datatier.net, you can do so, but you must use Visual Studio 2019 because datatier.net has a reference to Visual Studio, what's called the DTE or Design Time Environment, and we can't get to that in Visual Studio 2022. I don't, you couldn't a few years ago. I don't think you can still, but as far as I know. But there is a release version that I made this morning, and that's the purpose of this video is to test out the new release and make sure everything works. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. I'm going to just save it in my temp folder. And when it finishes downloading, I'll install it. It only takes a few seconds. OK, so that's going to give us two shortcuts. Let me close down my stock thing we don't need. All right, that's going to give you two shortcuts on your desktop, one for datatier.net and one for connection builder. I'm going to run datatier.net. The first step it tells you is to create a database named datatier.net.database. So let's do that now. And hit OK. Now it tells you to check this box, and we're going to do that. Now it says click here, and this will install the datatier.net tables and store procedures that we need. So that's done. So now I'm going to start our timer. But actually, let me finish this one more step. Uh, we're going to skip step two, but we need to go on to step three, which is set up our connection stream and environment variable. Windows authentication, build, test, install. In about three more seconds, this is going to close and tell us we have to restart datatier.net. So I'll go ahead and do that. And if you get to here, you have datatier.net installed on your machine. And now we're ready to start our timer. This gives us one hour on the clock. The first thing we need to do is create a SQL Server database for our project. So I'm going to create another database. This one's going to be called Stock Data. And hit OK. And I have a SQL script to make this go a little faster. And it just so happened to open to the right folder for me. So I'll go ahead and execute this. And that gives us four tables. And I'll just show you there's no store procedures yet because we have to build our project with datatier.net to create them. So we're going to do that. But first, we're going to create a Windows form uh, project to serve as our app. And for that, I have a NuGet package that's going to make this go a little faster. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio. Let me close down this. I had uh, visual I had datatier.net open for this started. All right, and for this we're going to say continue without code. Tools, NuGet package manager, 
package manager console and the first thing we need to do is I need a folder to hold our project so let me go to github I'm gonna create a new folder call this stock data okay so now I'm gonna say change directory and let me copy that path it'll save us and type in there copy Okay, and now we're going to go back to here and install data, it's called datajuggler.accelerate. It's a command line NuGet project. I already have it, but you should need, you're gonna need to install it. And now I'm gonna paste it again, but this time take out the word install. And that will create our project in the project folder. I'll go ahead and open this project up. And just make sure everything from NuGet installed compiles. Go ahead and compile it once. All right, and now I'm going to add a new folder and call this data. And this is going to serve as our data tier for our uh, SQL Server connection. So I'm going to copy the full path of this. And now we're ready to create a data tier.net project. Let me see where our timer's at, because it's supposed to be topmost, but it doesn't appear to be on top of other things right now. All right, so we're going to create a new project. Project name is going to be stock data. There's our folder, and I'm going to click on create data tier in project. Okay, it worked the first time. I will tell you that sometimes it fails the first time, and if it does, just run it again. And I even changed the message to say that. So sometimes you have to install that twice, and I've tried to fix it, but for now it seems to work if you do it more than once. All right, and I'm going to type in my server name because we need to add a database for this project. So this is going to be Rocket SQL Express. If you click on this little ellipsis, it'll refresh your database list, and now we have stock data. And save, and save. Okay. Now if this was a large project and you had any tables or fields you want to exclude before you build, you can do so, but I'm going to go ahead and just build everything. Now it's going to prompt us to include the code generated files in our solution. Now this just so happened to open to the right folder for me because I tried this last night when I was tired. So you're just going to need to browse to your wherever you created your data tier and this will include the three of the projects in your solution. Okay, so now we have that, and now we're going to execute these store procedures that were code generated. And now, if I click refresh here, for each table you get five store procedures. Make that a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, so now we are on track. So what we need to do next is we are going to uh, set up our project. I'm going to paste in the files that I've already got downloaded. So let me go to this one, go to documents, copy, and I'll go to the GitHub version of this project and just paste this in. And this gives us, I'll just show you in here, this is a, for some reason, this one here has the wrong name. Okay. All right, but other than that, everything else should be right. And now what we're going to do is we are going to download our comma delimited list of, uh, I'll go over here to endofdaydata.com, not to, I mean, to nasdaq.com, and I'll put the link to all these in the description. First thing I want to do is select NASDAQ and hit apply. I think it was already on it, but I wanted to just make sure. If you change the exchange, you have to hit apply or it'll download the wrong file. Okay, and I'm going to download this comma delimited list and save it in our project folder. So GitHub, stock data, and documents, stocks. Okay, and now I want to switch to New York Stock Exchange. Come down here, hit apply, and then download this. And I'll save this in the same folder. I'm going to rename them both when, when we get over there. Let me open this folder up in File Explorer. Uh, this is NASDAQ, and I'm just going to call this NASDAQ.CSV, and the other one is New York Stock Exchange. 
CSV. Okay, now what we need to do is open these. I'm going to close down these two sites because I no longer need them. Actually, a few of them. And we're, the only one now we need is Accelerate. We're about to co generate the classes from Excel header rows. So if we open this up in Excel, what we have to do, there's a few columns that we don't need and they're all together. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them. And now make this a little bigger. And we have to save this file as a .xlsx extension. So I'm going to call that, except for I want it to be .xlsx, and hit save. And I'm going to close this and open up NASDAQ. Delete the, not NASDAQ, I'm sorry, New York Stock Exchange. We're going to delete these same five folders, I mean five columns. Delete, make this a little bigger and save this as a .xlsx extension. Okay, so now we have, we're ready to code generate with Accelerate. I'm going to delete the two comma delimited list files because we no longer need them. And I'm going to go to Accelerate. First thing to do is give it a namespace call this stockdata.objects and I'm going to upload Excel. Let me browse for the folder. Stock data documents, stocks, and we've got NASDAQ first. Okay, um, the sheet name is already selected for us, so I'm going to click generate class. Now this gives, puts the file that was code generated in a zip file because browsers do not like to download C sharp files. They give you all kind of security warnings. And I am going to save this in my objects folder. And that's fine for the name. And then next we're going to hit the reset button, which I added over the weekend. And we're going to upload Excel again and do New York Stock Exchange and generate the class. And I will save this in the same folder. Now I'm going to open this folder up. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete the temp object. That is only there so the NuGet package compiles so that namespace is available before you code generate anything. And I'm going to go into the zip file. I'm going to copy the NASDAQ.C sharp and go up a level and paste it and do the same thing for New York Stock Exchange. Copy. And now I can delete the two zip files because we no longer need them. And now what we're going to do is close down Accelerate because we're done with that. I will put the link to Accelerate in the description. And what we're going to do now is make sure our project compiles. So let me open. We can close that one down. Make sure everything compiles with the new code. Okay, it doesn't, and the reason I need to exclude this from the project. Okay, and let me try that one more time. Objects does not exist. Okay, we're going to rename this. Everywhere that we have Accelerate WinApp, I'm going to hit Control H, and I want to do the current project. I'm going to change this to stock data and replace all. Should be about 18, 17, somewhere in there. All right. And now if I try to build again, it worked. Okay. That's a good sign. All right. Now what we're going to do is add a solution folder to have the four projects that make up our data tier. So we'll say add new solution folder called data. Okay. Let me rename our project. And this is going to make Visual Studio not like Let me close Visual Studio and reopen it. Somehow it doesn't like when you rename some stuff. OK. So I'm going to save the project as. It doesn't let me do that. Let me do it here. And right. I'm just going to call this stock data. Dot solution, and I'm going to rename this to stock data. All right, and I'll delete that. That'll get recreated, and we'll just open this up again. And it's going to say our project is missing, but that's fine. We'll delete it. 
remove and we're gonna say add existing project and let me go to stock data stock data and let me delete this yes now let me make sure this compiles before we go any further okay add existing project not existing project add new solution folder okay got rid of that error and now I'm going to add the four projects that make up our data tier and this was created via NuGet a little while ago data application logic component and by the way I am working on .NET 8 getting this down to one or two projects but that will probably be by November before I have that data access component gateway and finally the object library and if you're familiar with entity framework the object library is similar to entities in entity framework the only difference is there's a I'll just open up and show you there's no tracking like entity framework has you have to know to save your own but I prefer it that way alright and now I'll just build and make sure all that compiles it should okay for each table you get two classes it uses partial classes you get a data class and a business class the data class is code generated every time you build with datatier.net so do not put any custom code in the datatier in the data class but the business class is only created if it doesn't already exist so put any business logic you need or custom properties or methods in here and you'll be fine all right so now we have everything we need I'm gonna open up our form let me give this a second and I can open up the designer we don't need this for our project because we're going to get to these files a different way and I'm going to make a copy of this button here is going to be called uh, import stocks button change the button text to import stocks and I'm going to make that a that's fine it fits all right and now make it just a little wider I'm going to make a copy of this button and this time this is going to be the process files button and for that we need to change the button text process files and I'm gonna make our form just a little smaller and I'll try to get our something like that oops that's fine I'll move these up a little and I'm gonna move these two up a little uh, my status label is way too big all right and I'll make this oops if I can get the little error there there we go okay all right good enough for prime time all right so now what we're gonna do is change our form is gonna be instead of the form being called accelerate win app I'm gonna make the text just stock data and I'll just leave the icon the same that's fine all right and now we are ready to import our stocks into SQL Server so let me just build and make sure everything compiles still it should okay and let me go to click again except for this time it's not going to be called update it's going to be called import stocks button underscore click alright and I am going to this is a program here called Regionizer 2022 it's my one and only Visual Studio package but I find it very useful if you don't like regions you still might like it because it has a lot of code generation features so first thing I want to do is just format selection for that so that'll put our um, button click in the right place I am gonna get rid of this interface we no longer need this and we're going to get rid of on text changed and the update button click event and then now we're going to add our other button click for process files click and once again format selection Visual Studio doesn't like indented regions since 2015 and I haven't bothered fixing that it's such an easy fix 
All right, so now we're ready to write our two. Um, the first thing we're going to do is import our stocks, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to load Excel with Blazor Accelerate. Let me get this closed and look at our timer. This is supposed to be topmost. I don't know why it's not showing up on top of other things, but we've got plenty of time still. Okay, so what we're going to do is create an object that's called a worksheet info equals new worksheet info. And I'm going to turn on my auto commenter for regionizer is one reason I like it. And now I'm just going to say uh, set the properties. Worksheet info dot sheet name equals NASDAQ. Worksheet info dot load column options is load column options and num dot all columns except excluded. And worksheet info dot path equals, and we will go get that from our solution right here. If I open up documents, stocks, copy full path. And that will give us our path to the worksheet. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to load a worksheet. Equals Excel data loader dot load worksheet. And there's two overrides. You can either pass in a workbook or you can pass in a path, which is what we're going to do. So I'll pass in worksheet info dot path and worksheet info. It's kind of duplicative there, but that's fine and now I'll just say load the worksheet and now we're gonna load the C sharp objects that were code generated and I'll show you that if we open up the objects folder this is our class that was code generated okay it's uh, these are all the columns that are in our object in our Excel file except for this one and loading and the row ID is just a unique identifier for each row. But we're, we're going to be loading this object up. So here's how easy this is. List NASDAQ, which is the what those each of those classes are called. And I'll call them NASDAQ entries equals NASDAQ.load worksheet. And that loads all of the objects in that worksheet. Now that to me is worth the price of free right there. But let me know your opinion on that. That's a lot easier. This is built using EPP Plus, but I've worked with EPP Plus for many years now, and I find this much easier because this is, uh, you don't have to refer to cells. So I'll just say load the NASDAQ entries. And now we're going to do the same thing for the New York Stock Exchange data. So I'll just make a copy of this, and this is where I'm doing. I call this my code review process, but it's mostly during copying paste. And sometimes I find errors in the source that I'm copying from. All right, uh, that's fine. And this is going to be worksheet info 2, 2, and 2. And I'm going to change this to New York Stock Exchange and change this to New York Stock Exchange. And I believe that gives us everything we need. This is going to be worksheet 2. And this is going to be worksheet info 2 and info 2. And I don't think I made any copy and paste errors there, but doesn't mean it's not possible. And this is going to be called New York Stock Exchange. And we'll just make this New York Stock Exchange entries. And this is going to be New York Stock Exchange and Worksheet 2. So that gives us all of these stocks that were in those two worksheets. And now we're going to save those into SQL Server. So to do that, this is going to be, I just want to do a quick test that says if list helper, I need to add a couple of using statements. I skipped a step, so we'll come up here. First thing I'm going to do is saying I don't need this at the moment. And I'll just say using uh, application logic component. Uh, we need to add some project references. Skipped a bunch of steps. Okay, we're going to add a reference to application logic component, data gateway, and object library. We don't need the DAC. All right, so now I can, and we're going to add one more, or maybe a few more, using data juggler dot ultimate helper. And we're going to need this later, ultimate helper dot objects. 
We've already got ultimate helper, sorry. Okay. And now we're ready to say if list helper dot has one or more items, NASDAQ entries, New York Stock Exchange entries. And that just saves typing not equal to null and count is greater than zero. So it kind of does all that in one. And I'm going to hit control shift and type that comment for me. And that, that comment, the auto commenter uses regular expressions. If anybody wants a video on that, let me know because I think that's also pretty neat. I used to work somewhere where you had to put a comment on everything and I got tired of redundant comments. Okay, so now what we're going to do is iterate our NASDAQ entries for each NASDAQ. I'll just call it entry in NASDAQ entries and control shift. And sorry my keyboard is loud, but I like my Corsair, uh, Platinum, whatever it's called, RGB. It's a uh, pretty, my typing speed went up since I bought it. All right, and now we're going to create a stock for each entry. So I'm going to just say stock. Oops, I left out one more thing we need, and that is using application logic component dot connection using object library dot business objects and using data gateway all right we need those three and there's one more thing we're going to need we need to set up a connection string for our environment variable so we can talk to sql server so to do that i'm going to use connection builder type in my server name Database name is stock data, Windows authentication, build, test. All right, so now I have this on my clipboard. I'm going to edit the system environment variables. I'm going to add a new one. It's going to be called stock data connection string. And I'm going to paste in our connection string we just built. And before I close this, I'm going to copy that name there, stock data connection string. And we have a place in our project just for that. So let me open up data, application logic component, connection, connection. And here, open up private variables and constants. And it tells you to change this to the name of your environment variable. So I'm going to paste this in here. So now we're ready to create an instance of the gateway. And our connection string is all wired up. We don't have to do anything else for that. Okay, so back to here. So now we should have everything we need. Stock, stock equals new stock. Control shift types our little comment there. And now we're gonna set the properties of the stock object. So it'll just be stock.ipo year equals entry.ipo year. Stock. Let's see. Now stock.track, last close I'll just put to zero for now. Stock.track, what that is is I only want to store uh, the daily price data for stocks that have 100,000 shares traded daily. I've found that if you try to buy or sell a stock with less than 100,000 shares of volume, it'll the price can move when you sell it and it's not worth trading to me, but you can change this number. And I'll show you how we're going to do that here in a second. So I'll just say struct.track equals true. Now we're going to say, let's finish this off. Average daily volume will just be zero for now. We'll do that later. Exchange is going to be NASDAQ for the first one. Oops. Stock dot. industry equals entry dot industry stock dot sector equals entry dot sector stock dot streak is going to be zero for now and that the streak what that is if it goes up three days in a row or if it loses four it'll be negative four so it's just a way to keep track of uh, you know how many the, just the current streak of the stock we have another table called stock streak that I use to keep track of the the low, the, when the stock streak starts and then when it closes, just so you can kind of, just to show me the volatility of the stock is basically what it's for. Okay, and now it's going to be stock.symbol equals entry.symbol and stock.name equals entry.name. And I think that's everything. 
So now we're ready to save this. So to do that, we're going to actually, I skipped one more step. So I am going to add a variable here called gateway just to keep this. Uh, so I'll call it gateway. And one more called, if I could type, admin. And for that, what I want to do is create properties. So I'll use regionizer again, create properties. And I'm going to click on admin and say has property and do the same thing for gateway. And what that does is that's just faster than typing for null. So, and I'm going to move all these over because if I don't, Visual Studio is going to do it for me. And I've got tired of fighting Visual Studio on that. And I've complained to Microsoft enough times and they don't care about regions anymore. And before we go any further, I will just make sure everything compiles. I'm kind of paranoid but okay it doesn't what doesn't compile okay this is okay we don't need this anymore I got rid of that interface that's why that error showed up okay all right so now what we want to do here in our I'm gonna create a method so I'm gonna add new method I'm going to temporarily change this to event and back so that goes to void. It's just a shortcut. And the method name is going to be called init. And now here in our, and I'm going to push that back. Here in the constructor, I want to call init. And hit control shift. It types that comment. I hit that twice, I guess. Okay. So now in the init method, let me minimize this for a second. I want to create our gateway. So I'll just say gateway equals new gateway connection dot name. So now our gateway is all wired up uh, with the connection string set for us. And now we're going to load our admin object. So admin equals gateway dot load admins dot first or default. And that saves me having to say admin.find1, which speaking of which, we need to uh, insert into our table admin. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna go back to SQL Server. Let me close down everything we got. Okay, so I'm gonna do a new query and I'm gonna uh, go to admin underscore insert and drag our parameters here. And I'm going to drag it one more time. Oops, not there. Let me come down here. This is going to be where we actually insert. Okay. And what we're going to do is just say declare at documents folder in care 256 declare at min volume. That's what I was talking about, the 100,000 shares traded daily number and process folder. And that's also an invercare 256. Now we're going to set the values. So I'll say set at documents folder equals. And to get that, we'll come over to our project. And here is our document. Minimize that. Copy full path. Go back to SQL Server. And paste that in. I'm going to say set at min volume equals 100,000. You can change that to whatever you like. And now set process folder. And the process folder is just where we move the files after they've been processed so we don't have to deal with them again. And I'll go back to our project. And I'm going to go ahead and say show all files. And here is our process folder. I'll just include it in the project. You don't really have to, but I'll copy that full path back to SQL Server. Okay, and now we can say exec admin underscore insert and now we have, I'll hit control shift R so SQL Server refreshes and hit execute. So now we have our admin object loaded. Now we're going to go here and add three read-only properties and this is using regionizer that I think you'll also think is cool. So this is going to be a string for the first two. So I'm going to say admin dot documents folder add read only property and it does that for us and I'll move it over at the end. This is going to be processed folder 
add read only property and the last one is an int and that's going to be min volume and all that does is give us top level properties I don't have to say admin dot min volume all the way through so add read only property all right and we're going to scoot all these over just to make everything lined up and the last one is documents folder okay so that should let me minimize everything give us everything we need all right and I'll go ahead and build just to make sure we're still compiling and it does okay I'm gonna close down the designer because I don't need it at the moment go back to our event and now we're ready to save a stock so we are just to look at our little timer we're 32 minutes in but we've already code generated everything and we're ready to save so not doing too bad on time okay and now it's going to be stock oh, actually uh let me put a variable up here I'll just say local bull saved equals false and what this is going to do we can just say saved equals gateway dot save stock and that's going to be ref stock perform the save and the reason it's passed by reference by the time it comes back from this method the auto number ID value will be or auto yeah uh, identity insert value will be saved okay so one thing I didn't do and I want to set up our graph so we have a little method here that comes with this project set up graph and this is going to be uh, saving NASDAQ stocks the graph maximum is going to be NASDAQ entries dot count and show graph is true set up our graph and I'm going to go to this method because there's one thing I need to update the package and I forgot but we need to add this uh, I'm going to make the status label visible always true even when I hide the graph and I'm going to make it uh, refresh an application dot do events it'll slow this down a little bit but that's okay and I'll just say refresh everything for a comment otherwise the program gets in a loop and won't bother updating this okay so back to our here now since we have our graph set up we can now say if saved that was a control shift comment I can say graph dot value plus plus control shift types that comment okay so now we look like we are good to go we're gonna now copy this code and do the same thing for uh, NASDAQ let me see is that right yeah for New York Stock Exchange I mean okay so this is going to be saving New York Stock Exchange stocks New York Stock Exchange entries and I'll change this to New York Stock Exchange it's going to be still called entry in New York Stock Exchange entries and I'm going to change our comment okay and everything is the same here except for New York Stock Exchange and I think we're ready to save that and I needed to just, let's see yeah that looks like that's right okay so now we're gonna attempt to save our stocks in the stock table so let's go ahead and run it hopefully everything works let me minimize everything Oops. all right import stocks okay I should have put a done at the end of it I'll go ahead and do that now but I'm gonna go to SQL server and just make sure select count star from stock okay that looks right and then I'll go back to our little form here at the end of our two little methods I'll just put a done set up graph and that's going to be finished zero and false okay I'm not going to run it again but just in case next time I need to do this so I'll put this code in put this project on github when I'm done all right so now we are done with importing the stocks 
What we're going to do next is process the files in the documents folder. But before we do that, I'm going to create a custom method using datatier.net because it's uh, we need to do that to make sure each stock is trackable before I save it. So what we're going to do is open up datatear.net, open project, double click, manage data, and go to stock. Create new method. Method type is find by. Parameter type is single field. The field is going to be symbol because I want to find a stock by symbol. I'm going to leave all these names. You can change them if you like, but now I'm going to confirm the update and next I'm going to go ahead and install the store procedure. If you want you can just copy and paste it if you have, but that installed our store procedure for us. Now I'll show you in a second how easy that is to uh, call. But what we're going to do is first I want to get the list of files that are in our folder, our documents folder. So we'll say uh, just to be, I guess, uh, careful, but I'll just say if directory dot exist documents folder. If the directory, I realize I spelled the wrong. Now we want to get the list of files in the directory. Equals file helper dot get files documents folder. Just leave that and remove extensions is false. Okay, and I need to do one thing because I just realized uh, this does everything recursively. So let me go to our documents folder. Uh, I'm actually going to change this to dot text. I don't want to get that. And let me go to uh, in our stocks folder I am going to rename this and I'll just call it sort yes that way we don't get that returned when it gives us all the uh, files in the folder okay so I'll just say get the files in the directory and next it'll be if list helper dot has one or more items files Control shift and now what we're going to do I just added a new method let me go ahead and first I'll start our loop so I'll, I want to set up our graph so I'll say set up graph and that's going to be processing files in documents folder graph.maximum is going to be files.count and show graph is true so I'll just say set up the graph and next, uh, what I want to do is a for each loop. So I'll just say for each string, file, and files. Control shift types our comment. And now I added a new method over the weekend. The new method is going to give us something called a text line. It's going to be list text line lines equals text helper dot get text lines from file and that's going to be the file path right there parse words is going to be true and we need to pass in a delimiter so I'll show you one of these this is the NASDAQ files it's a comma delimited list and the default delimiter for uh, text helper uses a period is one of the things to split on and I don't want to split on periods because we need that for the prices have periods in them decimal points all right and I'll just say uh, don't say but I didn't realize I made oh I did make a change but I didn't save it so that's good okay so now what we're going to do is create a delimiter and it's just going to be care character array delimiter equals comma all right, so use this delimiter. So now we can say delimiter, and what that should do is uh, get the text lines from this file. And I have not tested this code yet, but I think it's gonna work, but that's my famous last words, local. 
int count. If you notice, there was a header row in that file, so we don't want to parse the very first row because that's our header. So what we're going to say now is if list helper dot has one or more items lines. We're going to say for each text line, line, and lines. And we're going to use control shift here and control shift there. Type the comment. All right. So now what we want to do is say count plus plus control shift. If count is greater than one, so we skip the header row. And now what we're ready to do is say if line dot has words and words dot uh, and line dot words dot count equals eight that could there should be exactly eight words in each line all right if the words exist and have exactly eight words then we can create a stock from this uh, line. So to do that, what we're going to say is, uh, not a stock, it's a daily price data. Daily price, can't type, daily price data. I'll just call it data equals new, control shift for that, and now set the values. So what we're going to set first is data dot uh, stock uh, dot symbol equals words. Uh, we need to iterate the words. I'm sorry, not iterate, but uh, line dot words. Okay, that's what it was. So data dot symbol equals line dot words zero dot text set the properties for this daily price data and if you notice there's a column here let me open this up I do not need this column right here I've asked them that, that basically it's something like which part of the exchange this trades on or something not, not like what I don't know we don't need it though so we're skipping that so we're gonna go on to the next one but I am gonna take this right here and just copy this to our little project put it up here just so I don't have to look back at the file a lot but the next thing is the stock date and if you look at this it's in an eight digit format and I have a method just for that so back here it's going to be data dot stock date equals date helper dot parse eight digit date and that's going to be words two dot text because we're skipping word one. Oops. Line dot words. Sorry. Dot text. All right, and that should give us that. Now it's going to be data dot. I believe the next one is open and high. So we'll type in open price equals numeric helper dot parse double. It's going to be line dot words three dot text, and it's going to be zero and zero. And that just means if it can't be parsed, we're going to get zeros, but it should be parsable. And next will be the high price. And I'll just copy this to save us a lot of typing. And this is going to be data dot low price. And I'll paste that again, be words five. And then Close price equals, and we'll paste that again. This will be word six. And the last one is the volume. And this is going to be very similar, but it's numeric helper dot parse integer. And that's going to be line dot words seven dot text zero zero. Okay, and now we're ready to perform the save. So I'm going to create a variable up here. equals false. 
And now, well, before we save it though, this is where we're going to look up the stock price and see. So I want to do this, um, even though we've got all those values already typed. So I'll say stock, stock equals gateway dot find stock by symbol. That's that custom store procedure we created. And we're going to pass in data dot symbol. If I can type. All right, find this stock. Now we're going to do two things. If null helper dot exists stock, uh, okay. Control shift types that comment. If stock dot track, if track is true and by default when we did the importer everything is true but the second time you run this uh, for the next file it may not be and I'll show you why in just a second so what we want to do is if data dot volume is less than min volume which that's that read only property we created from the admin table if less than 100 thousand shares then we're going to say stock dot track equals false set this to false and now we need to save this so we'll say save equals gateway dot save stock ref stock perform the save okay else we're going to go ahead and save the daily price data so for that, we're just going to say saved equals gateway dot save daily price data ref data. And once again, perform the save. So that's pretty simple to me compared to, I mean, Entity Framework's not that difficult, but I still think this is a little simpler, at least for, especially for creating sort procedures. Okay, so what I want to do here is at the end of each file, let me get down to the bottom of our loop. We're going to say graph.value increment the graph. But before we do that, I want to move the file to the processed folder. So to do that, I need a file info equals new file info file hit control shift for the comment and now we're gonna say string destination path equals path dot combine and that's going to be processed folder and file info dot name all right uh, just set the destination path and now we're just going to say file.move and it's going to be file and destination path. Move the file to the processed folder. All right. And now at the end of our little loop here, I want to put a setup graph and that's going to be just finished and I'll put zero and false. Okay, show finished. So let me build this, and I think we did all this in pretty good time. Let's look at our clock. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left, so let's go ahead and start this and just see there's a little bit more I want to do, such as set the stock streak and some other values, but we'll do that uh, later probably. Let me see how fast this runs. Okay, and we'll go ahead and click on Process Files, and let's see if everything's working. For each file, it's saving, um, you know, I think it's a few thousand uh, records, so it's not going too slow. So that was pretty good, though. What do you think of Accelerate and Datatier.net? To me, it's a pretty, I think it's better than trying to do you know, set up Entity Framework. I, I've used Entity Framework for a while and everything's great if it works, but I've seen some cases where Entity Framework just will not save and if it doesn't save, it doesn't give you any information. Where with datatier.net, you just say gateway.getLastException 
and it shows you uh, the error, like why it doesn't save, like some field can't be null or some constraint is violated or something like that. You get some information back where sometimes an entity framework doesn't, especially if your database is not set up right, which sometimes I have to work on databases I didn't create or even if I created it, I might have made a mistake and it's hard to figure out what's wrong. But, so, I think this is pretty cool. We can also go look, just go look at our, uh, let me go to our project. We should be seeing this number of files is getting smaller here. So as it turns along, and the processed folder should be growing. I'll just go into that real quick. Yeah, they're in there. So. It's nice to know everything works. It's always a good feeling when things that I met, wrote a method over the weekend that where I wrote the uh, text line get uh, get the text lines per file and that saves a lot of time where it gives us the words from everything. So we'll go look in SQL Server and make sure everything actually worked next. I'm kind of sometimes I celebrate a little too early, but if we come back to our project, it says finished. And we will go look in SQL Server and make sure we actually have some data. Select star from daily price data. And we do. So everything's working. Okay. Um, some of these are some values I that like the spread is going to be the difference between the open and the high price and some other things. And I haven't filled all that out, which I'm going to do in part two of this. Uh, project, but I just wanted to build a video mainly to test out because I built a new release for datatier.net and I wanted to test that new method I just wrote. So thanks for watching. Let me know your opinions for Accelerate and for uh, datatier.net. I think they're both worth the price. If you like either one, please leave a star and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you can because I try to make videos as often as I can. I'm not working now, so if you need to hire a C-sharp programmer, I am available. All right, well, thanks for watching, and have a great day.